Okay, this sermon is entitled, Can a Person Live Any Way They Want and Still Go to Heaven? I'd like to open up with prayer and then with a few verses. All right, dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners, I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Psalm 66 reads, Make a joyful noise unto God, all ye lands. Sing forth the honor of his name. Make his praise glorious. Say unto God, How terrible art thou in thy works. Through the greatness of thy power shall thine enemies submit themselves unto thee. Now, this question comes up a lot when you're dealing with lost people who are trying to grasp this concept of salvation being a free gift. And people will say something really stupid like, are you saying you can just live any way you want to and expect to go to heaven? Now, the short answer is yes, because salvation is not based on how you live. It's based on the grace of God. But I'd like to go ahead and just explain this a little more profoundly. When a person is lost, they can live any way they want to, and they won't be disciplined or chastised by God. Now, obviously, there are still consequences for your for a person's behavior, and, and people reap what they sow. But as far as just getting away with everything in the sense of you know god not really punishing them they would get away with pretty much a lot of the stuff they do and they're not going to be punished but see once a person is saved they're born again they're born of from god they become god's children and as children of god we can do anything we want and still be saved but we can't do anything we want without consequences we're still going to be punished so it's like when a person says are you saying i can just live any way i want to now that i'm saved the answer is yes, but you're going to reap you're going to reap the consequences, you're going to be disciplined by God. You're not going to get away with anything. It's kind of like you go out and rob the bank, you're still saved, but you're going to go to prison or you're going to get some other type of punishment. So that's the answer. Okay? If people would just explain this a little better, you wouldn't be accused of being an antinomian or being, you know, cheap grace. You see, I don't care what these people say because they're just they're going to hell. They're lost. The people that that don't agree with this. Because they still think salvation is up to them, and salvation is not up to people. Let me give you one verse on this, then I'll close. See, to be saved, you have to basically relinquish this concept or this idea that you can contribute something to your salvation. You have nothing to contribute, and Second Timothy chapter 1 makes this clear. It says in verse 9, it says, "...who hath saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us." in Christ Jesus before the world began. See, whenever a person is saved, they have received God's grace from God's perspective or from God's coin of vantage before the world began. So if you received salvation before the world began and you weren't there in, in existence, then how can you do something to mess it up now when the reception of salvation and God's grace was given to us before we were even born? Okay, so there is nothing we can do. And so this proves right there that it's not based on anything we do, any, any works that we do. It's based on God's holy calling, his purpose, and grace. And the word saved is in the past tense. So if a person lives like the devil, they're still saved, they're still going to heaven, but they will lose rewards in heaven, and they will be dealt with in a castigatory or in a punitive way by God as their holy father. They're not getting away with anything, and they will reap what they sow. So that's all I have. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name.